What I've made is my first part for my box with a joint, just like these, the finger joint, also called a box joint, also called a locked corner. And it was done with this very simple jig that is little more than a drill bit and clamped to a table saw miter gauge. This jig is really easy to make and even simpler to use. I want to adjust this so there's enough wood to totally surround that drill bit. Okay, drilled all the way through. Use any old scrap, as long as it's straight, flat, and those important things. Now I'm going to take this same drill bit out. And I selected this drill bit because it is one eighth of an inch in diameter, which is the same diameter as the saw curve that I'm going to cut. I'm going to just Tap it down until all the threads are hidden, but there's enough of it left. See, that's a very secure, strong guide pin that's going to help me to cut these box joints just as perfectly as can be. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to line that up. See, the saw kerf is one eighth of an inch. The drill bit is one eighth of an inch. And the space between should be one eighth of an inch. Okay. And I'll clamp that firmly in place to so the miter gauge. You know, it's always easy to get things a little bit off. And it doesn't look like I did too bad of a job. What I've made are two end pieces for a box just like this. The next thing will be to cut the side. This is some scrap stock of the same dimension that I'm using to make my box. I'm going to lower the blade so that the blade height is the same as the thickness of the stock, plus a very, very tiny cleanup allowance. And I can make my first test cut. I was observing as I made my test cut that I was a little uncomfortable with the width of the insert here in terms of how well it supported the stock. So I'm changing to an insert that is more accurately sized to the width of the, the blade to give better support to the stock as it's cut. So I made my last test cut on this piece, so I'm going to flip it over and reposition it on that pin so that this piece becomes a frame of reference for making the next cut on my matching piece. So I slide that in tight. Now I'll remove this and put it aside and then continue Well now I'm just a little bit too tight and I'm going to loosen things up. So at this point, if I put a frame of reference there, you see I can observe how much needs to come off of that. So now if I put my stock down in place at the end of the jig, which I'm going to do right here, you can see I got it tight, very tight, right? So I'm going to loosen my clamps. I'm going to be careful not to bump that because I'm going to move it the other way to narrow the space between my guide pin and the blade. So I'm doing it. Can you see how much I've closed it? It's not, I've uh, opened that space just a little bit and then I'll lock my clamps down again to hold it tight. Don't get frustrated. Don't give up. Even the very best woodworker has to go through a process of trial and error leading to good results. Uh, 
Now that feels good. There's just a little space there for glue, but you can see that it holds together, but that should work. Now that I'm happy with my test cuts, I'm ready to start working on my box. So you can see that I have to stop shy of this top area to allow space for my sliding top to fit. Okay, this is my last one. You'll notice that when I had made my last cut, I pick it up and turn it end for end to begin making my next cut. So I'll, now I'll use this to make my first cut on each of the end pieces. Turn it in for in. To cut the bottom for the finger jointed box, I'm going to measure from this edge to this edge and then add the additional amount for the tongue on the bottom, less a very small amount for expansion and contraction. So I know I'm going to have a tongue of one eighth of an inch. There will be an eighth of an inch there and an eighth of an inch there. Well, it's two plus a quarter. The bottom panel in this box fits exactly the way the other ones do. The difference will be that because the box size is thinner, we're going to have a smaller tongue on it. If I were to make a table saw cut for a bottom panel to fit, that groove that I cut would be visible on the outside of the box. So I'll cut a blind cut with a router table so that that groove cut to house the bottom will be completely hidden. I'm going to sand these little fuzzy things off that were remnant from being cut on the box joint jig. But the important thing at this point is not that it be perfectly smooth, but that there be nothing there to obstruct the fit as it goes onto the router table. Here at the router table, the objective is to be able to drop this down over the router bit and then move from one position to another position and stop without having the router bit cut through at the end of the stock or cut in at the beginning of the stock where it's going to be visible. So I position this stop block so that the router bit cuts just a little bit over an eighth of an inch from this edge of the stock into that space there. Hold it very firmly and use the C-clamp to lock it in place. And then I'll do the same thing for locating my stop block on this other side. Can you see how that lines up with the thickness of the bottom? That way, when the bottom is installed, this will be perfectly flush with the bottom side of the box. So it should come out flush like that. And you can tell by observing that little tooth right there where it's going to cut. So I have my pieces lined out exactly the way they'll go against the fence, just so I don't make any mistakes at this point. I drop one end over, drilling rather than routing, pick it up and do the same thing at this other end. And what this is doing is it's creating a stopping point in the travel so that when the bit exits the cut, it won't tear a finger off 
And so now, when I get that done, I can start and slide it from one side to the other, and then back. All the time, you have to hold a consistent amount of pressure against the fence, and so it just takes a pass forward and a pass back. I'll do the same thing now on this. Now I have to readjust my stop locks to be able to route this exactly the same way. So I'm going to just flip the fence over and use this side that has a nice secure edge. I'm going to do my drilling at each end. So that brings me to eight inches for the length of my bottom. Trim up one end, slide it over against the stop lock, and pass it through to finish the cut. So the next job is to make a rabbit cut around the side of this, forming a tongue on each edge. So that's a pretty piece of wood. I'll need to take a thin slice from that to uh, begin making the top panel. So if I cut about that much of it, I'll join an edge. I'll cut it to width. But first I want to set up to cut the groove in the sides of my box for my sliding lid to fit. And I'm going to make the lid so it will slide in or out at both ends over the height of this end. I've got my blade set, so if I raise it up a little bit, cut this portion off. I also want to provide just a little bit of clearance for that lid to slide, so I'm going to bump this out so this will be just a little bit narrower than the space between where the lid fits and the bottom of the box. I could actually do a complete trial fitting at this point. So after I do a little bit of sanding to this edge, clean it up, make it look a little nicer, I'll be ready to glue the box together, and then I'll do the fitting of the sliding lid. And so I'm going to just use a flat piece of sandpaper. I'm also going to do a little bit of rounding of that edge. Not a lot, but just something so when you touch it, it doesn't feel sharp. And this little groove right in here where the lid's going to slide, you know, I will not get another chance quite like this one. And this is 240 grit sandpaper. So it's a pretty fine grit. We sanded the inside of the whole box. Now, I won't have another chance to sand the bottom either, so this is my chance to do that. So I'll lay out my parts exactly the way they're going to go together. This is going to be a friction fit. It doesn't require any clamping or tape or rubber bands or anything else. All I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting glue in my corners. So there's a dab in each. And I'll make sure that it gets on both surfaces. I'm going to put a little bit on this piece as well. So as these slide together, they'll spread their glue and do their job. So if, if they go together like this, they kind of help to distribute the glue with each other, right? There's that piece. I'm going to go ahead and slide the panel in place. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this end. One thing about this joint, it is so strong when it's complete that uh, it really will last for a long time. I can honestly say that I've never put together one of these that's ever come apart. I intentionally had these parts a little long where they stuck through. It's much easier to sand these parts down to the 
flat plane of that than to sand the flat plane of that down to shorter fingers. Okay, I'll do the same thing here because these two parts are going to go together with the end at exactly the same time. I'm going to pry this out so as these go together, they go together from those, uh, oops, those corner diagonals so that they distribute the glue in relation to each other. But right now I think that's ready to measure corner to corner to see if it's square. So that is probably about right. While this is drying, we're going to make a lid. So I'm going to measure 2 and 5 sixteenths. And I'm going to shave it down just a little bit and I'll be ready to go. I want to have a three quarter inch overhang of the lid on each end of the box. So I've cut this piece 10 inches long. I'm going to make a trial cut using this off cut piece from the sizing of my sliding lid to make sure that it will slide and operate exactly the way I want. I've got the height set just to about an eighth of an inch. I've got to raise the blade just a little bit because I'm too tight. The other thing is how does it fit within the sides of the box? And you can see that I also have a little bit of work to do there. So I'm going to raise the height of the saw blade cut. The other thing I need to do is narrow the space between the fence and the blade. So I think you can see what I did. I took a little too much, right? That's why you use a test piece instead of your actual lid. So before I actually cut the lid to fit, I'm going to drop it down just a little bit. Right there it should just kind of break away and a little sanding on the edge will do wonders with it. I want to make some, um, some cuts so that this tongue isn't visible on the outside of the box. And the way I'm going to do that is to use a cross-cut sled and make a whole series of little nibbles across there. And a whole series of nibbles are on the other end. And then I'm going to make some cuts on the top to give some interesting definition to this box. So it'll just be a couple angle cuts. Okay, so there we go. But that's essentially how you can make a sliding lid. I use the belt sander, orbital sander, and sand by hand to finish up the outside. I'm going to use a chamfering bit in the router table to chamfer an edge here. I'm going to use a wooden dowel as a stop pin, so I'm just going to make a very make a cut through here, cut it to length, and I'm going to take a sanding block and I'm going to just round my corners by rolling it against the sandpaper. You could also use a brass pin for this. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I'll make a decision where I'm going to put a stop pin. And I think I'll put it at this end, which is a, the less colorful end. It could probably use that little bit of uh, accent. So I'm going to flip the box over, and I'm going to mark right there, just right along the edge of the box. Now I know that the box thickness is 3 eighths of an inch. So if I pull this out and measure 3 eighths of an inch from that mark, I know that this would be the stopping 
point for my pin. So I'm going to drill a hole right about in there, centered between the two sides. And then when the box is all completed, I don't want it in there permanently yet because I still want to do the finish on the inside of the box. I'll sign my box before I finish it the way I do all my boxes. Then wipe on two coats of oil. Now to finish off this little box, I just have two things to do. One, this is a little bit of paste wax, and I'm just going to use this to apply to the edges to just make it uh, slide with a little less friction. The wax will just, will just keep it sliding effortlessly. So now I have this little brass pin, and I've polished the top of it, and I just have to slip it in the hole. Because that's a very good friction fit, I'm not even going to worry about gluing it in place. That allows me the option of taking it completely out if I want, but that provides a positive stop. Okay, it's all done. Making boxes is all about making corners, making corners that will last and hold the wood securely. Here's another interesting way to make a corner. I call this a lap corner because these parts overlap each other and it's a kind of an enlarged version of a finger joint, but this is one that is very easy to cut. It can be cut either by hand or on a table saw. I have four pieces of walnut to serve as my front, back, and sides. They're all planed uniform in thickness and, and cut to the same width. So the next thing I need to do is take a marking gauge, adjust it so that it is just a hair wider than the thickness of the stock. And the objective is that once the joint is all cut, I want to have just a little bit of material to sand off from the ends of the joint rather than from the broad plane of the box sides. So now I move it along to make a scribe mark on the side of the stock. Now I'll use this mark both for measuring the table saw setup, but also when I need to do just a small amount of hand chiseling to finish the joint. So I'm going to cut the female portion of the joint from the ends and cut the male portion of the joint from the front and back. So I'm going to make these an inch creates just for, for balance. For this operation I want to make sure that my blade is perfectly square. So now I've made a cut in along the shoulder from each side, so the next thing is I want to make a cut through there. I can actually take the measurements for the female portion of the joint directly from this. I'm going to align this outside edge with the saw cut on the sled. I'm going to move my stop block into position. I'm going to make a cut from this way, then from this way, and then I'm going to take little nibbles all the way across until I define that space. I want to see how well my joint fits. That's not bad. The next thing is I'll take a chisel. I'll work my way in from each side and just run right down my marking gauge line to clean up those little um, fuzzy things and that should finish the joint. Then it'll be ready for gluing. Okay, so this box actually goes together quite easy is a great foundation for building a box of any type. You can use a, a uh, simple base on it that extends out beyond the perimeter of the box and use screws to attach it from the bottom. Or you could use a panel that is hidden inside. There are any number of lid opportunities that you can use. Starting from this very simple foundation that's easy and fun to make.